Hello again, Conte. Uh, I got quite a few requests to do a guide on AT Volcana. Um, I actually wasn't going to initially because the the matchup varies quite wildly between the different weapons and stuff. But there are quite a few common openings and there's quite a few tells that you can look out for. And so the, I thought I'd point those out and also show off some gameplay from uh, Insect Glaive, which is probably the closest thing to a hard counter that I could figure out. Um, so yeah, I grabbed this run and I thought I, thought I would talk about it. Uh, the insect glaive opener is a uh, fairly typical you, you grab your buffs you grab your kinsect there's a lot of a lot of uh, admin work needs to be done at the start of a hunt you'll notice that i don't use wall flinches and i don't use mantles obviously use those to make the hunt um quicker for you or easier for you personally i just find them a little bit tedious to do so that's the reason you'll often see me ignore them but they're definitely worth doing uh, i just wanted to point that out because in a lot of videos i see people like wondering if if uh, like why i don't why i don't like wall flinch or anything like that it's purely just a personal preference thing in terms of i don't enjoy it um, so yeah, the Downward Breath is probably your best opening, not just for Insect Glaive, but for most weapons. You can see the Circle of Ice sort of propagates outwards. You need to dodge the middle one and stand sort of between the middle and the outer one. And then uh, charge up, if you're doing Greatsword for example, charge up a level 3 there, like here for example. You can see you want to dodge the middle one, uh, but then position... Uh, and again, it doesn't have to be with the Insect Glaive Pole Vault or anything. But you want to dodge the middle one, but you don't want to run outwards. I see a lot of people just running completely outwards. Um, this one also is uh, for Insect Glaive, you pole vault over, but for Greatsword, for example, you would just run to the side. Um, so the Insect Glaive matchup itself is just a lot of pole vaulting, basically. The more aggressive you are with the pole vaults, the uh, the, the quicker your time will be, but also the more risk you, you put yourself at. Uh, generally, a good way to gauge if you're going a little bit overboard is based on your stamina management. Uh, now, after that spin to, after that spinning tail, it will often... Uh, oh, I forgot this happened to me. I, I, I punished that a little bit too uh, too early. After the uh, after that spin tail, it, it will often use a either the, the sort of the, the frost breath that freezes you onto the ground, uh, or alternatively, it will use the uh, the uh, a larger frost breath that sort of travels across the map. Um, either way, with the insect glaive, you pole vault over, and with the other weapons, you uh, dodge to the side and uh, and punish it accordingly. Uh, Frostcraft is uh, not Frostcraft, sorry. Coalescence is generally a really nice skill to have for Velk. Uh, you're gonna want to bring Nullberries to this fight, of course. But uh, yeah, uh, Nullberries are really nice, uh, paired with Coalescence, or potentially like Blight Res 2, for example. Now, the armor mechanic. Uh, if you break three pieces of Valkana's armor, you will give it a fairly long stagger, which gives you a nice opening to do a lot of damage. So you can see I've broken the head armor, um, and now I've tenderized the wings, and that's because when I get the first head break, I tend to prioritize the uh, the wings to try and help get the, uh, the, the armor topple. Uh, you'll also notice that oftentimes when I do my pogo sticks, I will not, like... I could position differently to try and focus the head. However, you'll see oftentimes I commit to like running all the way through to the chest and trying to um, and trying to hit the arms like here, for example. You'll see I'm basically like going all the way through his body and, and trying to hit his arms. And of course, if his head happens to get in the way, I'm not going to complain. But uh, yeah, like here again, you'll see I'm, I'm kind of pushing through towards the arms and hitting the head if I get lucky. And that is because I, I want to do arm damage. I want to do four arm damage to try and break the uh, the ice armor. Uh, again, because I want to get that that large topple. So you can see we've just broken the uh, we've just broken the ice armor on the wings. You saw them sort of shatter just there. So now all that's left is to get the front arms, and I'll be sorted. Of course, Agitate has expired. So uh... oh, and by the way, the, again, these don't have to just be Insect Glaive openings. It's just that Insect Glaive has a lot of really good openings for a lot of Valkana's moves. So that's the reason I'm showing it off with Insect Glaive. But you can you can follow all of these strats with uh, basically any weapon you like. Uh, do try to take advantage of the pillars while you can. Uh, I I'm not sure if if I land I do land them yeah. Um, they, they are really handy. Uh, they do something in the region of like 2,500, 3,000 damage per pillar, which is kind of crazy actually. Valkana has something in the region of 60,000 health. So each one of those is something like 5% of its health right there. So if you land both pillars, straight away your time is going to go down by basically 10%. And um, that is Valkana's new Nova move, by the way. You saw it just there. It does that sort of weird backflip thing and then summons a bunch of uh, ice pillars that propagate outwards. With Insect Glade, you can mostly, like here for example, you have plenty of time to read them coming so long as you haven't committed to an overly long move. But with uh, Insect Glaive, obviously, you can vault over them. Unfortunately, I didn't have red buff when uh, when she toppled, but it's not a big deal. Yeah, it's a really nice opening here. I don't believe it resets the uh, the new sort of uh, armor gimmick. Uh, if you aren't aware, Valkana has a gimmick where it sort of has uh, multiple levels. Uh, and as as it sort of uh, as it novas, the levels go down. But as it uh, as it like goes into frost armor, the levels go up. And Elder Seal is what's primarily used to lower that armor. If you've noticed that Valkana's hit zones tend to change throughout the fight, that's the reason. Um, yeah, as Valkana goes up through the stages of this various... Oh, and, and when you've knocked him out of armor mode and, and he's, he's, he's like this and he does the... Uh, the the like the downwards... The, the flying attacks that it normally does are just that downwards breath um, in in in, uh, in regular phase. Uh, however, when, when it's... Yeah, here we go. You can see it's leveled back up again. 
uh, when it's uh, when it's in its weakest phase and it and it's doing that triple attack, the best thing to do is to uh, to claw onto it, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, so Elder Seal is used to to lower its phases, which in turn increases its hit zones. So if you've noticed that the hit zones of Volcana seem to, you seem to suddenly start doing less damage, like um, after it goes into its uh, after it changes mode, even after you break the armor, that is the reason. Um, and so Elder Seal is a really nice thing to bring on this fight. Uh, it's pretty ideal for the. And by the way, I'll speak about the set in uh, in just a second once the run is over. But uh, yeah, Elder Seal is really nice for this, and that's basically the Vitalis weapons are, are generally a pretty good option. When the Novas, it will. Uh, there, there are basically two simultaneous ar armor mechanics. There's the standard frost armor type um, Valkana gimmick where it has, uh, where after it Novas, it goes back down a level, and then the Dragon Seal based one is uh, is is a completely separate mechanic, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, it's a little bit it's a little bit convoluted, but basically just uh, <laughs> you're just gonna keep doing damage as normal. Don't worry too much about it, in my opinion. Uh, just uh, do your damage as normal, but wherever possible, bring a little bit of Dragon Seal if you can, because it's quite handy. Other than that, I'm not sure that there's too much else to talk about, really. It's a pretty typical Valkana fight. It just, uh, the difference between this and regular Valk is that it's basically just had its AI speed uh, <laughs> ramped up by, by like a, a factor of a thousand. Oh, also, you see me miss the pillar there, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, it, it's basically just a much quicker version of regular Valk. Um, and so if you understood the regular Valk fight, you'll have a vague idea of how to handle this fight. Uh, it is a lot more tanky, obviously, uh, and so it'll have a lot less clags and a lot less topples, but uh, otherwise it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm trying to think about what other openings I can mention. If you see it run across the map, also, yeah, when he does that sideways jump, that he can either do the uh, the sort of body press on you, or he can do the uh, he can do a breath attack. You've kind of got to delay your response accordingly. Apparently there is a tell, but I haven't figured it out yet. What else? Okay, so uh, when Ven when Velkana limps, rather, uh, I'm also going for for another topple there. I, I committed to a little bit too late, so I didn't get much damage on the wings there. But uh, the plan is to get another one of those armor topples now that it's back in its uh, its phase. What else am I going to talk about? Uh, I have the Kinsect. I have a Fire Kinsect on this set. Uh, I'm using the Drill, so I'm using a Slow Kinsect. Uh, if you aren't aware of the Kinsect Drill, I, I believe Cups has a fairly good video on it. Uh, I haven't talked about it yet at some point, but uh, I'm not sure if I should because I don't really usually do weapon guides. But uh, yeah, you bring the slow kinsect with a with a nice element built into it, and then you get uh, extra ticks when you when you do the the, the kinsect drill. Now here's the thing with Velkana, if you get it to its limping range, um, also I'm using a fair amount of handicraft uh, on this set. Uh, if you get Velkana to within a limping range, then it will travel to this second area and then immediately fly back. Um, I completely forgot about that, and so I started chasing it, and then I get a little bit confused. You can see on the map, in the mini map though, it's uh, it's traveled back to here. On the plus side, if you do know that this is going to happen, you can fly away, especially if you're using like Greatsword, and that will net you a nice wake-up option, whereas if you stay in the area, obviously, it will uh, it will not sleep, and so you won't be able to get a, a nice wake-up option. Of course, IG doesn't have the greatest uh, punishes for sleep, so it's, it wasn't probably wasn't worth it, but uh, it was just an accident anyway. Novas are a fairly nice opening if you can get uh, close to it. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> a mixture of its collision versus the momentum that I had with the Insect Glaive... Uh, down thrust there took me just out of range to get hit by that spinning circle i honestly didn't know it had a hitbox at that point i was a little bit frustrated when this happened i actually i genuinely didn't know that the hitbox uh, lasted for that long so i was just uh, i was just basically unga uh, obviously don't do that yeah this run would definitely have been sub nine if i hadn't made such a stupid mistake but uh, the nova itself if you, can, if you can get nice and close obviously you can do damage while it's novering you can still use the trick where you claw onto it during the nova however because it ends in that downwards breath it can also be really nice to to punish it like you would punish any other downwards breath it seems to have, it, it uh, has like a slightly larger opening than most downwards breaths as well. Now, if you see it doing the par the paralysis breath where it tries to freeze you in place, you can move in towards Valkana. That will also, um... oh, and by the way, this move here where it summons the icicles above you, it summons more. Uh, AT it summons, I believe, four per, per attack. Um, but uh, yeah, if it does the paralysis breath, you can fly in towards, and that's what we were going for, by the way. The, the reason you might have seen me doing some pole vaults that seemed a little bit questionable in terms of where I was aiming rather than the head is because I wanted to get the wing for the final knockdown. Um, I didn't bother retenderizing because I knew it was fairly close to being dead. But uh, yeah, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, hopefully I've showed off some of the openings fairly well and, and, and talked through them all. I know Insect Glaive has a fairly unique matchup, but it's basically a hard counter for this fight in my opinion. You can, uh, and I'm showing this set, I'll talk about the set in more detail in just a second. You can basically vary how aggressive you are with your pole vaults, depending on how comfortable you are with the fight. And so the more comfortable you are with the fight, the more you can just sort of spam the down thrust on moves that maybe aren't 100% safe. Um, and if you aren't super comfortable with it, then wait for him to do his long breaths or to do his like uh, his downwards breaths um, and punish accordingly. 
uh, yeah, it, it's really up to you. It's quite a nice fight in terms of varying it uh, to your will. This this run could obviously go down in time quite significantly. I showed off the skills that I had uh, at the time of the run in the video itself just a second ago, so you can have a look at those. I show all the decos and stuff. Uh, however, I've tankered with the set since then, and so I'm not 100% sure that it's exactly the same. I might have like a little bit less handicraft or a little bit more. I'm not 100% sure. But all the fundamental skills stay the same, and obviously handicraft is just a skill you're supposed to vary yourself anyway, based on like how much you're running out of sharpness. Anyway, uh, Kinsek is Verestag 4s with the fire. As I said, I'm using the slow Kinsek for extra pierce ticks. Uh, I've got the uh, affinity and the health regen augment to try and reach 100 affinity with the fatalis weapons. You know how they are. Um, and aside from that, here are the skills. Noteworthy skills are claw boost, obviously. Uh, one point of coal is also really nice at, on this, uh, maybe even more uh, if you're willing to. However, I tend not to run the AT Valk ahead for coal on, on my insect life sets. I tend to run the Alatrion arms because the points of power prolonger are really nice. Uh, speaking of, three points of power prolonger are really nice <laughs> for insect life. They make your triple up last longer, which means less refreshing of buffs. Um, I don't know if it's strictly optimal, but uh, the, the Alatrion arms are so good anyway that it's, it's just worth it to me. Other than that, it's mostly just DPS aside from Airborne. Airborne, if you spam Pogo sticks a lot, is really nice. But uh, otherwise, yeah, just DPS. We get to 25 base affinity, uh, 45 with Agitator, and then uh, 95 with Weakness Exploit, obviously. Uh, not really possible to get that final 5% affinity with this weapon unless you drop Health Augment, which I wasn't really willing to do. Um, yeah, I don't really have much else to say, to be honest with you. The skills are fairly self-explanatory. Uh, do let me know if you have any questions. Obviously, you know, use your mantles, use your flint shots, all that, all that kind of jazz. But, uh, but for me, I think that's really all I have to say. Uh, yeah, hopefully this helps, um, and I hope you have a lovely day. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Oh,